the second week of our discussion for the subject mythology and folklore. So let's start with the question, who is William J. Thumbs? So we'll find out the answer later on once we learn about what is folklore. Here are the objectives for the second week. Describe folk literature as relevant artifact of history. Identify the different genres of folk literature. And lastly, discuss the significance of studying folk literature. What is folklore? Folklore is anything by which a social group expresses itself in its special traditions and cohesiveness as a group. Yung folklore talaga is a traditions, customs, and stories that are passed down within a culture. So, napasa-pasa na siya within the different generations. The late William J. Toms was actually the first one who coined the term folklore. So, August 22 is actually the most important date to folklore people. It is the anniversary of the first appearance of the word folklore in print. This is the first appearance of the originally hyphenated word folklore in print. The medium was a letter to the editor of the Athenaeum, a scholarly journal, and the author was William John Thoms himself, although he wrote the letter under his pseudonym Ambrose Merton. The concept of social group is a key one in the identification of folklore. So, mamaya, malalaman natin ba't kailangan ba talaga siya group. An individual story is not folklore unless it is retold among members of a social group. And the definition of social group is a flexible one. Kasi guys, pag uh, sa folklore, any two or more people who share at least one significant cultural behavior is really common. Tapos, um, they often share traditions which create a shared identity among group members and help the group endure over time. So, nag-create sila ng group para magtulong-tulungan and to support each other and inspire each other. And then, um, there are a wide range of sizes and types of social groups. So, pwedeng konti lang, may iba, mas malalaki yung group. And we have folklore of large national groupings such as American society, folklore of cultural groups within that larger complex society such as African American or Irish American stories and songs. Folklore of American children, folklore of particular families, folklore of various uh, professional groups, even folklore of individual offices or factories. So I have here something to share to you. Itong the Jersey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society uh, is one of the most common societies na nagsishare ng emotion, stories, and even experiences nila. So, there's actually a book about it and meron ding movie already. So, pareho silang matataas yung rate. So, I hope that you will watch or read it. So, the Jersey Literary and Potato Peel uh, Pie Society, it's a story in 1946. A London-based writer begins exchanging letters with residents on the island of Jersey, which was German-occupied during World War II. I am part of a book club, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, founded by Elizabeth McKenna. Our Friday night book club became a refuge to us during the occupation by the Germans. So compelling. Guys, I've got the book, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. So if you want it, you can borrow it from me after pandemic. So that you can read it also how beautiful this fiction book about a group of uh, writers or storytellers. So this book is just a fiction one but 
I could say that this could be a true story because there are lots of events here that really happen in Guernsey during the World War II. Every social group, no matter how large or small, will likely have shared stories, jokes, or practices that are folklore of that group. Siyempre, di pa, ganun naman talaga ang nangyayari uh, pag sa kwentuhan or even sa group. Kung minsan, sa atin lang for education students, alam ng kwento na yun. But we could pass it to our friends, even to our brothers and sisters. So, masasagot natin yung tanong natin kanina kung bakit ba nagkakaroon ng shared stories or folklore yung bawat group. So, using the Chihalas people or Native Americans as an example, if a story was not properly attended by its audience, it will be dropped and will never be told again. Because both the audience and the teller had separate responsibility. The audience was to uh, listen carefully to a story and the tellers was to enliven that telling in a context specific way. So, may kanya-kanya silang responsibility to do. So, kung ikaw yung audience, dapat talaga nakikinig ka ng maayos. Kasi, if you could listen to the story well, you could share it. So, from audience, pwede kang maging teller. But, as a teller, dapat sobrang galing mo. Dapat makuha mo yung um, attention ng audience mo. Kasi, pag hindi, Pag walang naka-appreciate ng story mo, it will be dropped and will never be told again. These aspects of Chihala storytelling illustrate some essential characteristics of the transmission of all folklore. So what does it really mean by Chihalas, guys? So Chihalas are a native people of western Washington state in the United States. So they should not be um, confused with a similarly named Chihalist in uh, British Columbia. So let's focus dun sa practices ng Chihalist of native people from United States. So where does the word came from? Bakit sila tinawag na Chihalist? Actually, Chihalist comes from the our pinangalan talaga siya sa river. So for those who uh, who live dun sa upper river na yon, tinawag na din silang Chihalas people or people of the sands. Okay? So, without a community which it belongs to and expresses, folklore is simply not a folklore. So, yun yung pinaka, ano talaga nila, uh, prinsipyo nila, kung gaano kahalaga i-transmit yung folklore. Kung hindi naman talaga siya na-appreciate or kung hindi naman talaga kagandahan, bakit kailangan pang ipasa or i-share dun sa ibang tao, di ba? Kaya malaking talaga yung responsibility as a teller, storyteller. Dapat magaling ka talagang kumuha na atensyon. So this is one of the features that distinguishes folkloristic Stories, for instance, from written short stories or novels. So, kasi pag sa folklore nga, you are telling it live. So, dapat may audience ka. But for short stories and novels, kasi you are focusing on editing the manuscript. Dapat maganda yung words. Dapat yung pagkasunod-sunod. You are not really thinking kung paano mo siya i-present. Life, de ba? Pero pag uh, sa folklore, dapat entertaining ka to catch the attentions of the audience. Tapos ang delikado pa nun, pag ayaw ng audience, tapos hindi nila na-appreciate, malilimutan agad yung story na shiner mo. But for books, sa uh, mga novels or written short stories, di ba minsan may mga book na hindi appreciate, hindi na appreciate for this generation, but since it's written naman, uh, nababasa pa rin siya, tapos biglang sisikat na lang bigla for the next generations, diba?
yun yung uh, pagkakaiba ng no? folklore sa mga written stories. Folkloristic stories and inextricably link to a social group and thus to a social interaction as well. So, kailangan talagang may social interaction. So, bawal siya pag saan? During pandemic siguro, like nowadays, di ba? Kasi kailangan magsama-sama yung tao. So, yun yung pinaka-focus nila, interaction. Siyempre, wala pa naman kasi yung technology. Let's build a better vocabulary together. So, keep this new word. Inextricable. Inextricable. So, it means impossible to disentangle or separate. So, sana all na relationship na inextricable. So, impossible yung paghiwalayan. Folkloristic stories, especially in more traditional cultures, are performed as much as told, being carefully crafted to fit their audiences. So, syempre, you should be knowledgeable enough then kung storyteller ka, kung ano ba talaga yung uh, gusto ng audiences mo or kung saan yung kiliti nila. Are they into drama, love story, or kung gusto ba nila yung mga jokes, tiba? Kasi, Sayang din naman yung effort mo kung hindi naman talaga na-appreciate ng isang taong gusto ng uh, jokes lang or just wanted to laugh, ba diba? Hindi mo sila mapipigilan, ay, mapipilitang gustuhin yung mga drama na stories kung aya talaga nila. But you are so uh, gifted enough or sobrang talented mo na siguro kung kaya mong um, makuha yung attention nila. Here are the four aspects of the process of folklore transmission. First, folklore is passed on in interpersonal ways. As in Chihala's example above, folklore is always passed on between persons. So, nakakaroon siya ng interpersonal way. You should be uh, communicative enough or marunong kang makipag um, humarap sa maraming tao. The same thing as what Chihalis people did. Okay? And then, the second, folklore is passed on in a way that is active and flexible being adapted to its audiences and their context. So, nagbe-based din siya sa audience tapos dun sa um, wants nila. And then, folklore is thus constantly in process, constantly changing, whether a little or a lot. Siyempre, lahat naman siguro, you know, change is constant, right? So, even folklore, kasali dun. And the third, folklore is often um, intergenerational, although it may have a good deal more historical depth than this. Okay? So, siyempre, if it's within the group lang talaga, nagsishare within the generation, nagiging intergenerational siya. But if people will keep on telling the story, telling the stories, napapasa din siya sa ibang generation. But hindi naman talaga na-appreciate yung isang bagay na isang tao, di ba? Kung hindi naman siya nakaka-relate nito. Kaya pag folklore, uh, with this third na process, it should be uh, through a social experience then. Because I just wanted to, to tell you yung story ngayon or sa mga nangyayari nowadays, guys. Um, even yung mga fiction books or fiction stories ay kinikritik na ng ibang tao just because uh, it's something na hindi mahatotohana or hindi dapat mangyari. Which is, di ba dapat pag fiction writer ka, if you are a fantasy writer, you are writing based on your um, dream, based on your thoughts. Pero ngayon, yung tao, they give comments. Bakit ganto? Bakit ganyan? Diba tulad nung nangyari kay uh, J.K. Rowling is a very known fantasy author talaga of Harry Potter. Ngayon, meron siyang bagong book na sinulat. Tinutulog sa siya, diba? Meron pang R.I.P. J.K. Rowling. And I really don't like the thought na fiction writer ka. 
you are writing something from your mind, tapos yung tao nagre-reklamo, di ba? Based lang naman siya fiction, di naman talaga siya realidad. But you can't really blame people kung ganun sila. Kasi nga, um, sometimes may mga tao na when they hear stories, they relate themselves to it. Tapos pag sobrang na-relate nila, they absorb the story so much, may effect din yun. And that's why nagre-react din sila. So what's the difference between folklore and myth? May pagkakaiba ba tong dalawang to? So let's find out. Uh, mythology is actually a part of folklore which deals with enduring and important themes. So para sa iba or sa ibang culture, they consider it as sacred. So the themes is concerning on the meaning of human action, the place of human persons in their social, natural, and spiritual worlds, the origin and meaning of our natural and social worlds, and often the religious significance of the above themes. So, dito guys, makikita natin once we study it more deeply, na even gods and goddesses live like human beings then, and they have the feelings na meron sil nagsisala sila, nagagalit, and they were even fighting with each other. Okay? Mythology, unlike some items of folklore, as in examples from family folklore, the origins of myth are usually uh, indiscernible loss in the distance past. So, hindi talaga alam kung saan ba talaga nagmula or sino ba talaga yung una nakaisip ng mga stories na yun or mythology na yun. Mythology itself is always quite ancient. So, sobrang luma na talaga, sobrang tagal na talaga ng mythology. So, among the Chihalis and among many other Native American groups, to enter myth time is to go back to the time when everything in the world spoke the same language, when animals spoke the language of people. So, yun yung para sa kanila, yung ancient, uh, ancient time or myth time. Yung tipong... Um, the same language pa lang yung ginagamit ng tao. So, ito ata yung before time na ginawa yung tore ni Babel, de ba? Kung saan nagkakaroon ng different languages yung mga tao. So, even animals, sobrang tagal na. That's how they believe yung myth time na yun. So, in every case, the world of myth is identifiably set off from the world of the everyday. So, totoo naman talaga kung ano naman talaga yung stories based ng naman sa everyday life. So, parang halos pareho lang siya ng uh, gustong mangyari sa folklore na dapat it should be uh, related yung mga ginagawa everyday. And Jungian psychologists have termed myth the territory of the collective and conscious as opposed to the ter territory of the conscious mind. So, yun yung, um, sa mga psychologists ni Jungian, yung collective and conscious. So, kung ano da yung mga stories natin, it came from us unconsciously without us knowing. So, later on, I'll be discussing about uh, Carl Jung, psychologist na yan, and even si, ano, si Sigmund Freud ay kasali din. So, mami-meet na naman natin itong mga psychologists na to. In many cases, the mythic poems, stories, and ceremonies of a culture are set off from the everyday by the use of a special language. And myth speaks its own language and uses its own symbols, symbols that bear remarkable and persistent similarities in all cultures, even given the incredible diversity and range of mythological expressions in different societies. So, sa mythology naman, di ba, uh, one of the sources ng meaning ng words or yung mga language like yung mga Oedipus or yung mga different types of yung Achilles heel pala. Di ba, 
it's it means na weakness. So, galing talaga siya sa mythology. So, may kanya-kanya silang symbol na ginagamit dito. And the similarity is the basis of what Paula Con Allen refers to as the psychic unity of humankind, discernible, she feels, in a cross-cultural understanding of oral literature and which Carl Jung refers to as a collective and conscious of which all human persons partake in common. So, kaya sinasabi ng iba, once you are creating an art, it's impossible that no one will appreciate it. Kasi, lahat naman ng bagay na naiisip daw natin came from collective unconscious. So, kaya nga sa field ng art, sinasabi nila na there's no such thing as original. Kasi, Minsan yung iniisip mo na bagay, naiisip na yan ng, ng ibang tao dati pa. So, may kanya-kanya tayong unconscious but it doesn't mean that we are special na tayo na nakaisip nun. May marami pang tao who have the same uh, thought and collective unconscious like us. Okay? So, through... Though we must certainly recognize the culture's specific meaning of particular oral literature, the deeper commonality with which the mythology of all cultures may speak to us is indeed remarkable. Kaya maraming naka-appreciate talaga ng mythology kasi relatable naman talaga yung mga stories or yung mga happenings sa shinere nila. And then, it's more on deeper commonality. For example, ang story naman ng sa, di ba, sa, sa kay Zeus, di ba, meron din siya na infidelity. Kahit sobrang luma na ng story na yan, di ba? Ibig sabihin, dati pa talaga na uso yung, um, yung asawa ng babae, di ba? There's no satisfaction or contentment at all. As anthropologists, psychologists, and storytellers themselves have all noted that the language which myth speaks bears much in common with the language and the symbolism of dreams. Kasi marami naman talaga stories or even mga works of art na nag-base sa dream. In this sense, mythology may resonate in us even though we are not able to fully decipher it as we recognize it as speaking of familiar language since we have experienced the language of myth in our dreams. So, kaya daw natin na-appreciate kasi we even experiencing it in our end. Let's build a better vocabulary together. So, keep this new word. Decipher. So, it means to convert a text written in code or coded signal into normal language. Let's talk about the functions of folklore. Folklore functions to pass on the information and wisdom of human experience between generations. And indeed, it was folklore that gave us human culture in the first place by allowing us to build on our experience from generation to generation. Of course, guys, the stories that we uh, tell are based from the store, are based from our experiences, and we know that experience is the best teacher. Folklore is the original form of education in which both a social values and technical knowledge are transmitted. So imagine that one, yung folklore pala is the original form of education. Kasi before naman talaga wala pang teacher na magtuturo. But this one, for those storytellers, are the main uh, givers of wisdom based on the stories that they tell. And the uh, groups create and use folklore as a kind of community binding process as a way of expressing and continually strengthening their sense of group cohesion. So, if mapanood nyo yung or mabasa nyo yung sa Jernsey, um, Potato Peel Society, guys, 
uh, you could learn so much na gano'ng kahalaga talaga yung sharing of thoughts and even stories and wisdom. The process for transmitting folklore was always an interpersonal one as we have seen and usually as well quite an occasion for entertainment. So it's really more interpersonal and it could not be passed by person to person, person to person only, but through a group. An audience to a story was not only given the content of the story to muse over, to take away with them until it came time for them to use it. They also had a shared experience of listening to that story. As what I mentioned earlier, that an audience could be a storyteller, a storyteller also, once they could uh, appreciate the story itself. Okay? And the shared knowledge of the content of folklore strengthens community solidarity in many ways. Because once you share a story, you'll, you're giving them the thought na ganto dapat yung gagawin natin para magiging masaya yung ating community or our group. Folklore functions as a kind of education for listening and a lesson in concentration for those who hear it. Tama nga naman, di ba? Pag sa story kaya uh, you as a future uh, English teachers, you could see how important sharing stories to your students. It's not just sharing wisdom, but also teaching them how to concentrate and listen well. Further, the very act of listening to stories with their ability to totally engross the listener is itself an experience in concentration, in listening to another with one's whole being. So they will learn to appreciate that person and respect what's going on on his or her mind. Folklore also serves to develop a flexibility of thinking and critical consciousness about events and choices of actions. So, meron talaga, di ba, uh, sa mga stories na sinishare nila na yung choice na ginawa na is mali, ito dapat yung ginawa. So, they're giving them wisdom to be flexible dun sa thinking nila. And no need for you to experience that specific uh, event in your life if you could just learn by just listening to them, right? And folkloristic stories are full of surprises of spontaneous turns of events. Further, their symbolism is both open and exceedingly complex. Right, guys? Even stories nowadays are full of surprises, right? That's why I really love hearing stories or reading stories because there are different wisdoms and lessons that we could learn from it. Folklore, and especially folklore as mythology, provides us with a sense of our place in the social and natural worlds, a sense of the meaning of our lives and actions. I really agree with this. Even so folklore, na bibigay nila yung ano, um, meaning yung lives ng tao na makarinig. Parang ganto din yun sa art or even the books that we read. We could learn so much from it and even finding ourselves. Folklore functions is what can be called a time-binding device. Folklore as in a family's folklore of our text is characteristically cast in a form that is readily accessible to all the members of the group to which it belongs. And it is classically framed as well in an experiential style. Ayo naman pala, pag sa folklore, or even hold the story guys, yung style talaga ng teaching nila or sharing of wisdom is experiential style. I even love this type of, uh, so, hindi lang sa pag, ano guys, sa pag, to share ng stories, but even in teaching. Kaya mahalaga na napag-aaralan natin yung kahalagahan ng isang folklore kasi it's an experiential style. So, uh, students could learn so much 
from the stories from other people na gumawa before. Folklore provides its information as participation in the experience of situation and events. Kaya nagiging experiential nga siya kasi we could experience it as if when we are listening, di ba? Ganun ka creative yung mind ng tao. When we listen to stories, kaya minsan napapaiyak tayo or we could feel motivated based on sa nababasa natin or naririnig natin. Kasi ganun talaga yung power ng literary or ng isang story. And folklore serves to entertain. It's just plain fun. So, it's more an entertainment din talaga. But, there's so much wisdom and learning on it. And folklore shows us the delight that exists in the challenge of human living and the wonder and mystery of our own possibilities in meeting the challenge. So, ito yung sinasabi na... Once you listen to others' experiences or stories, you could learn so much from it. Mas marami kang matutunan kasi nga, di ba, you don't have all the time in this world na gusto mong ma-experience. Ay, ganito pala dapat pag when we love someone, dapat we need to uh, do this thing. So, pag may narinig tayong story, or narinig na natin yung mga kwentong ganto next time, alam na natin kung anong dapat gawin, na dapat natin iwasan. Okay? So, what are the genres of folk literature? So, here are the genres. We have the myths, legends, epics, fables, and folk tales. So, we'll be able to meet those different genres later on. Ancient theories of folk literature. So many have viewed myths merely as poor version of history and have attempted to analyze and explicate them in non-sacred ways to account for their apparent absurdity. Of course, guys, we could not really compare myth as a history, the and history it's based on facts na na aprobahan na talaga or validated already. Some ancient Greeks explained myths as allegories and look for a reality concealed in poetic images. So, para sa kanila, bawat um, myth ay may nakatagong meaning doon. So, it actually started yung this type of interpretation from the Stoics. So, sino ba yung mga Stoics na to? Sila yung mga taong who reduce the Greek gods to moral principles and natural elements. Kasi isa sa mga rules nitong mga uh, Stoic na to, na philosopher, that uh, the universe is governed by the law of reason. So, halos lahat ng bagay may reason at may nakatagong meaning doon. And we have to know that Allegory is nothing new. Common na talaga siya, kahit dati pa. And you have been reading and watching it since you were little. So, an example of allegory, guys, is yung story ng The Three Little Pigs. The Three Little Pigs, uh, yung tatlong baboy na yon, it actually symbolizes Americans. And then, the big bad wolf means the depression. Yun yung sinisimbolo niya. Historical interpretation states that at one time means were invented by wise men to point out the truth, but that after time meets were taken literally. The same thing as what happens uh, the three little pigs. Uh, nowadays, we just um, take it literally as an entertainment without knowing that there's a hidden um, meaning for that story when it was created. It's almost all the stories na luma na, even sa mytho lalo na sa mythology, may nakatago talaga siyang meaning. But because it was not really explained, of course, hindi naman talaga ini-explain lahat ng bagay, di ba? We have to use our imagination and our thoughts also. In other example, si Cronus, who devoured his children, is identified with the Greek word for time. So, tandaan niyo ang Greek word ng time ay Cronus. So, si Cronus ay mula sa character from mythology who said to destroy whatever it brings to existence. 
This approach was refined in philological studies of myth by Max Muller, who saw myths evolving out of corruption of language, what seems absurd in myth. And he suggested is the result of people forgetting or distorting the meanings of words. Uh, the phrases sunrise follows the dawn spoken in Greek could be interpreted as meaning Apollo pursues Daphne, the, main, the maiden of the dawn. So we'll be discussing about this, I know, yung mga characters na mythology guys. So just don't mind them. Um about their names. Mahikilala din natin sila. So, focus nang tayo dun sa um, approach na ginagawa ni Max Muller, which is um, myths are evolving out of corruption of language. So, meron tayong iba't ibang, nagkakaroon tayo ng iba't ibang meaning sa isang uh, language dahil minsan nakakalimutan or iba na yung pag-intindi ng isang tao. A similar theory is that myths, including scripture, are corruptions of history. Thus, uh, Deucalion is another name for Noah. So, mga example lang yun siya, guys, na minsan nagbabago talaga ang mythology or yung myths. And the fusionist Theory postulates a very early Paleolithic origin of mythology and then diffusion of various motifs through travel, migration, and other forms of transcontinental. Now let's talk about the modern, uh, modern theories in folk literature. The great modern advances in the study of mythology began in the 19th century when scholars like Sir James Fraser and Sir Edward Bernay Tyler argued for the study of mythology not as bad history but as a social institution and called attention to the myths of contemporary simple societies. So, buti na lang na pag-isipan nila yun kasi nga, uh, mythology is also uh, useful nowadays. Not as bad history, but as a source of wisdom. And the evolutionary theories of Tyler and Andrew Lang, since discredited as simplistic and ethnocentric, postulate a certain stage of savage mentality that tends to produce similar myths. So, ibig sabihin nun, dahil sa sobrang simple lang naman talaga ng myths, di ba? So, anyone could, uh, even from other countries, could understand about it. And some current theories instead pos possessed a common psychological or emotional basis and relate myth to universal religious impulses. So, minsan hindi lang siya sa... Uh, psychological and emotional, even the religious then. So, example na ito ay si James George Fraser. So, siya po yung nagsulat ng epoch making book The Golden Bow on the year 1890. So, it is a standard work on mythology, believed that all myths were originally, originally connected with the idea of fertility in nature with the birth, death, and resurrection of vegetation as a constantly recurring motif. So, ito po si Fraser, I wanted to connect yung dalawa, yung religion and magic. So, this is the book of the Scottish anthropologist Sir James George Fraser. The Golden Bow was a wide-ranging comparative study of mythology and religion. So, The Golden Bow was first published in two volumes in 1890. And the, what really makes this book so special is that uh, it has never been out print. Kahit sobrang tagal na niya na isulat, marami pa rin gustong magbasa and then others are still purchasing the book. Kaya hindi talaga siya na out print. Psychoanalyst Carl Jung believe that there is an inherent tendency in all people to form certain of the same mythic symbols. 
and religious scholar Marcia Iliad contend that the myths are recited for the purpose of virtually recreating the beginning of time when all things were initiated so one can return to original successful creative act because there are other people who wanted to ask about the beginning the ba? sometimes kung um, religious or spiritually we could not explain it others could explain it through mythology most contemporary students of mythology however have turned away from attempts to explain similarities and content so para kasi sa kanila uh, meets have different functions sa from culture to culture Kasi di ba kung iba yung pananaw ng isang culture, you can't blame them. Kasi they have their own thoughts and they have their own practices. So yun yun para sa contemporary students. And Sigmund Freud believed that seeming irrationality of meats arises from the same source as the disconnectedness of dream are both symbolic reflection of unconscious and repressed fears and anxieties. So, ito naman yung para sa kanya. Um, it's more on unconsciousness, yung mga repressed na fears and anxieties, yun yung mga symbols, diba? Uh, for example, yung Oedipus complex, tsaka Electra, Electra complex, diba, sa kanya, yun ang galing. So, those are the refre uh, repressed fears and anxieties. The anthrop anthropologist Bronislaw Malinowski considered all meets to be validations of established practices and institutions. And similarly, A.R. Radcliffe Brown examined how meets emphasize and reiterate the beliefs, behaviors, and feelings of people about their society. So, kung kay Sigmund Freud is about the uh, source of the disconnectedness of dream, yung mga symbols, yung sa anthropologist naman, kay uh, Radcliffe Brown is more on the society. And for Claude levi Strauss, return to the study of all myths by examining uh, common motives and elements of the stories, but rather by focusing on their formal properties. So, kung ano talaga yung pinapakita ng stories, we have to respect it. Kasi minsan, um, nag-iiba yung story base sa interpretation natin on it, okay? So, maganda din yung uh, theory ni Strauss about it. And he has called attention to the recurrence of certain kinds of structures in widely different traditions of folk literature and has reduced them to particularly binary oppositions such as nature and culture, self and other. So, binary, ano siya, um, opposition ng dalawa. Nature and culture, self or the others. Yun si Claude Strauss. So, yun yung property talaga, di ba, ng some story. And we have uh, also an additional about him. He contended that the human brain organizes all perceptions in terms of contrast and concluded that certain oppositions are universal. He advocates the interpretation of means as culturally specific transformations of these universal structures. So, marami talagang kinoconsider si Strauss in terms of studying yung sa mythology. So, what is the significance of studying folk literature? So, sobrang dami talaga, di ba, na significance in studying this, especially for you as a future educators. So, knowing the stories of one's community is also linked to personal power and self-esteem. Based on the stories of other people, um... Diba? Kahit yung mga kwento ng lola at lola natin. Once we hear it, we could feel so much empowerment and confidence na, o yung mga kaviten, yung halimbawa, sila yung, ano talaga, uh, one of the bravest group of people sa Pilipinas kasi sila yung nakipaglaban. Alam mo yung ganun. That's how important or significant ng uh, history or ng studying folk literature. And those who own family stories know 
who they are in terms of their communities and history. So thus, a Native American elders or those uh, old people before who work with disadvantaged youth stated that if those young people had the stories of their people, they would also have self-esteem that would help them to heal and grow. Okay, to end this discussion, let us all remember this quotation from Peter that stories create community, enable us to see through the eyes of other people, and open us to the claims of others. So once you become a future educators, I hope that you could share lots of stories that we are going to study for the subject for your students, okay?